Welcome to Inside Analog Photo. I'm your host, Scott Shepard, and the Inside Analog Photography radio program is brought to you by Fujifilm, making life more colorful. Black and white, C41 Neg, Chrome, PacFilm, and Instex is here in the country. Check them out, www.fujifilmusa.com forward slash professional, making life more colorful. Our friends at Richard Photo Lab, the place to send all of your film to be developed, proofs, scanning, high-res stuff, beautiful work, great turnaround, very much attention to detail, good stuff. Check them out, richardphotolab.com. Our friends over at DR5. If you want to take your black and white photography to the next level, shoot black and white chrome. Definitely check them out at www.dr5.com. Our friends over at Upstrap, the camera strap that will not let the camera slide off your shoulder at upstrap-pro.com. And of course, our media partners at the Analog Photography User Group over at www.apug.org. The place on the net for all things analog photography. we got a great show today. We're going to have with us Jeff Carp from Mamiya. Jeff is the product manager for Mamiya USA, and we're going to talk about Mamiya's offerings for film. Of course, they have their Mamiya 7.2 rangefinder, the RZ67 Pro, their new AFD3. All of their current cameras shoot film. Old ones, new ones, great line of history with Mamiya. Jeff, how you doing today? Oh, just great, great. Great to talk to you, Scott. Thanks for joining us here on Inside Analog Photo. I appreciate you taking time to explain the offerings that Mamiya has for people that love to shoot film, and you guys have a whole array of goodies. Pretty much everything you have, you can shoot film with. That's right. That's right. We still believe that there's important ability to be able to work with film, because there's still a lot of people out there that understand the advantages and enjoy working with it. Jeff, let's start off with, I guess, here with your current flagship camera. That's the Mamiya 645. This is available, of course, digital, but you can have a film back for this. So let's talk about the options for an analog shooter using the 645 format. Okay, well, the latest version is a 645 AFD3. That was introduced in the last year or so. What they've done is they've taken the history of the 645 series of Mamiya cameras. The Mamiya actually did start 645 camera systems. They really built a tremendous platform that the AFD3 can just really stand on top of it and have a lot of benefits from the ability to use, of course, the full range of autofocus lenses that we currently have, plus they'd be able to use a full line of the manual focus lenses from the earlier models. So they've really allowed everyone to take full advantage of all the optics and all the accessories that have been around for the system. So let's talk about backwards compatibility with the 645 AFD3. Can I take any Mamiya 645 glass that will fit on the camera? How does the backwards compatibility go? Yeah, you can go way, way back. It's not a problem. You can work with the manual focus lenses as well as the autofocus. We try to have as much backward compatibility as possible. As far as the film side of things, the film backs for any of the AF series would be compatible. So that still gives you a tremendous range to work with. It definitely does, and I think it just goes to show the support that Mamiya has given to people that want to use their systems, be able to to grab older lenses, newer lenses, and swap the stuff back and forth. Of course, you can't take a current AFD3 lens, autofocus one, and stick it on an old body, but would it work or no? It really wouldn't if it's not an autofocus model, because there would be no way of controlling the aperture. Because it's all electronic today, so you would have no linkages that would work. Backwards, that way, new lenses, old bodies would not be possible. What about back compatibility? Can I put an old back on a new body? If it's from the AF series, so the 645 AF being the first one, then it was AFD and AFD2, AFD3, all of those are compatible, so that's not a real problem. Anything prior to that, it was a little bit different the way the information was transmitted and so forth. So the older backs wouldn't really be recommended on it. It's not designed for it. But you have to keep in mind that the AF has been around for a very long time. So there's a tremendous number of backs out there on the used market as well as, of course, the new generation. And I think what's great to see, too, with the AFD series of cameras and the whole 645 format, as you guys still have a vast array of accessories, extension tubes, LOs, remote control devices. I mean, you guys have a complete, pretty full product line to go along with this camera. Oh, that's true. We've pretty much covered everything that people have requested over the years. We're always looking for something new. 
getting a little bit harder because the range is, is pretty well covered, but always looking for something new and different to introduce. Let's talk about the other offering. There's three cameras still that the Mia's manufacturing, and I guess the one that has a very rich and long history is the RZ67. That's right. The latest version is the RZ Pro 2D, and the D designates the fact that it's designed to work with digital backs without having necessarily needing to use any extra cables because the electronics that connect the camera to the digital back is already there. But it still is very much a film camera. The RZ has a very rich history, as you said, various versions over the years. All the lenses from the very first RZ are compatible. There are leaf shutter lenses, so they synchronize at all shutter speeds. Very, very exciting range from a 37 millimeter all the way up to 250. We really do have a very wide range of lenses. We have Apple chromatic lenses. We have close-up equipment. We have some tilt-shift adjustments available to be added onto it as well. So it really does give you a lot of control, a lot of flexibility, and that huge 6x7 piece of film is, is just really beautiful. Yeah, I think people don't realize anymore, and everybody's gone all this digital, and there's great stuff with digital too, but I think you can create some beautiful images, especially with the bigger medium format size film that still rivals what you can get with digital. Even if you look at the offerings today, companies like Fuji and Kodak, they haven't given up actually continuing to introduce some rather exciting films. While, yes, the emphasis really has gone to digital to a large extent, there are still some very interesting films that are coming out. Fortunately, many of them are still designed to work with the medium format, the 120 film sizes. Well, exactly. I mean, Kodak has just announced within the past few weeks the Ektar available in 120, the Ektar 100, the brand new stock. Right, exactly. So you can still get quality stuff here with what's going on. What kind of support is still in place with Mamiya for the RZ series? I know that the RB is no longer currently manufactured, but pretty much it's the same with the 645 series. Any RZ67 lens throughout its history will mount on the current body, correct? That's correct. That's correct. All the major accessories are interchangeable. It really is something that if you started early on, you can always expand the latest equipment. And if you buy something brand new, you can get some amazing deals on some of the older equipment that's on the market. So you are able to really build a system at an amazingly reasonable price. So, Jeff, let's talk about one more of the current cameras that is made is the Mamiya 7.2. It is a rangefinder camera with a 6x7 format. And that is the one that has lenses from a 43 millimeter to a 210 amazingly sharp lenses, beautiful design, very convenient to work with. It's a very fast focusing system. The range finder, the area is very large. To differentiate between the two images that a range finder uses that you would adjust until the two images become one, that tells you that you're sharply in focus. It's very bright and very easy to work with. So even though it's manual in focusing concept, it's very, very easy to work with and people appreciate that a great deal. What types of applications and uses are you finding people using the Mamiya 7 II with? It's interesting to see that you're manufacturing a rangefinder in such a large format, and you have for quite a while. What do you see people using this wider format, medium format rangefinder for, and you guys still continue to develop for this format and this size? Well, obviously the larger size negative or transparency really lends itself to situations where there's a lot of information, whether it's a landscape where there's a lot of detail or where you just want to get the ability to make very big enlargements of certain scenes. You really are limited very much in what you can use it for. But time and time again, you'll see these amazing landscapes or architectural shots or different situations where just having such a large negative size to work with lends itself to a very beautiful three-dimensional look to everything. Again, with the latest films, the resolution and the ability to blow them up so much just is breathtaking in many cases. As far as some of the unique things that we have, even though it is a 6x7, we do have an adapter that allows you to work with 35 millimeter film. 
and then it becomes more like a panorama application because it gives you a long negative that you can print and it's just using a 35 millimeter film but getting the advantage of these amazingly sharp lenses and a much longer area than you would normally get. So it gives you 70 millimeter long strip of film that's being exposed. It's quite amazing and it has interesting effect all by itself. Do you find that maybe that analog capture and film use is very heavy, even probably more so in Japan than it is here in the States, that this is why Mamiya continues to develop all these products that are applicable to analog capture? Oh, I'm sure it is a big factor. There are various parts of the world that have not embraced digital as completely as it appears that the United States has. So, sure, there's still a market for it. Even in the United States, we still have a lot of interest in it. Does it compare to what it was even five years ago? No, of course not, because the ease and the convenience of digital has really made it harder for most people to continue to work with film, even though if you've used film, there's still a difference. And the people that really, really feel the, the need to work with film are very pleased to have an option that Mamiya gives to them. No, because really, I think the only body that's still currently developing product for the film and analog capture market is Mamiya and Leica, really. Right. right. Well, it is a select group of photographers that still like to use film, in some cases demand it, but we are still serious about supplying the products that people are looking for. So that's why we continue to work in the film area, and from what I can see for the future, that's not going to change. Do you still get a fair amount of feedback from people that are shooting analog, that are using Mamiya products still, that are still using RB67s, RZ67s, different types of Mamiya products? What kind of feedback are you getting from your clients, your customers? Well, I do get a lot of calls, again, not on the scale of what it used to be, but yes, we do get people that are still pleased to be able to work with the cameras with film. I have to say, though, one thing they are always asking about is, how compatible are their cameras with the current generation of digital backs. So even though today they're shooting film and they like it, and they may not give it up completely, even they are saying, well, I like the camera, I like the way it works, I've got all these lenses, I have every accessory I could possibly want, but it's getting harder and harder for me to resist going to digital. And I'm pleased to say that we have the ability with other than the rangefinder, which has no solution at this point, and I don't know if it will be one, but the RB, the RZ, the 645, all can take the latest generation of digital backs with the adapters that we provide. So even someone who's heavily into the film side does have the option at any time to switch over to digital, and many of them are doing it with very good results and are very pleased with it but like the option of not being locked into only digital, to be able to have film when they need it and digital, let's say a client demands digital, they can go right to that without any problem. Have you seen analog capture still very prevalent with the RZ67 with maybe uh, older pros that are resistant to give up film workflow? Or have you found that the people that have been inquiring about analog capture from what you've seen, is maybe younger photographers that really haven't experienced film and want to play with it? A little bit of both. You have the diehard film photographer who has no interest in changing, and so their RZ or RB really is continuing to be a workhorse for them. But the problem is a lot of photographers that in an earlier day would develop their own film aren't so willing to do it anymore, and what they're running into is incapable of getting someone to do the processing for them. So if they can't do it themselves and they can't find any other sources out there, digital starts to become an easier solution, at least in their mind. Of course, when they start realizing what's involved with all the software to make that digital image really look its best, sometimes they do end up going back to film because they know what they were doing there and they don't have to worry about the process. On the other side, there are a lot of young photographers who grew up with digital and are discovering that there is another world out there of film, and they really are enjoying it a great deal because this is going back to the Stone Age in their mind, but they're realizing that the results that they're getting in many cases are impossible to be achieved with digital. So both young and old are going in different directions, but 
unfortunately, they are discovering that film is a really a viable product still. I definitely think so, and I think people can also get some inspiration on your site if they go to Mamiya.com and click on photography. You guys have a master showcase up here, and I guess it's what, Jerry Avenheim? Right. Well, what we've done is it's real easy to say let's always update our website and let's get rid of the old and always bring in the new, but we have such a tremendous range of photographers that have worked with our equipment and have done so much with film that we've continued to keep up that portion of our website, which may be several years old now, but it doesn't change the fact that these are people that are professionals, very serious in what they've done, and they've produced outstanding images with film. So you can go to the website and you can still see all the different photographers from years past that have worked with Mamiya, that film was the only choice, and they still like to use it today. Yeah, there's some beautiful work up here on your site. People can look at this stuff. The current Master Showcase, it's up now. I mean, there's some very great photography here with this gentleman that's doing all this stuff in Hollywood and with all these movie stars, and he's using an, an RZ67, and he's shooting film, and it's just amazing that, like you said, that it's still a viable format, and you guys still support this great work. Right, definitely. Well, good quality photography is something we always like to showcase whenever we can. There's a lot of old established photographers and a lot of new upcoming photographers that we'd like to have as much visibility as possible. And our website and our blog is always in that direction. We're doing more and more as time goes by to try and promote not only the world-class photographers that everyone may know about, but we're also talking about people in the more conventional situations a doctor who does photography to help support a hospital in a third world country, you know, things like that. So photography is a very important part of what we do. It's not just the cameras, it's the results that come from it. So our website and our blog is trying to show all of that as well. So I guess, Jeff, the point here is where is all this information help? Where can people find out about the blog and what you guys are up to and just learn about the Mamiya systems and what's compatible and how all this stuff works out? Well, very easy. Just go to mamiya.com, M-A-M-I-Y-A.com, and you'll see the latest products that we're introducing. Many of our new digital systems, the DL28 and 33 are our new systems with the AFD3 and the new 80-millimeter lens, a 28-millimeter digital back, a 33-megapixel digital back. They're all there to see, and if you look on the top of the landing site, you'll see in red blog. If you click on that, it will automatically bring you to the latest blogs, which goes back in time, all the different people we've spoken about and the shows I've been to where I show different products. It really gives a very clear review of what is available from Mamiya today and gives you a little inkling of what's happening in the future. So a lot of exciting things are yet to come. Oh, I think there is. So coming up here, where would be the next place if someone wants to go see yourself and Mamiya, where they can actually come look at some gear and chat with you guys and see what's going on? When's the next show you're going to be at? Not anything for a while. I think there'll be some things happening later in the year. But when we have something new, if you go to our website, there'll be any listings of any new shows. Many of the dealers have their own private shows that they go to. I'll be in China in May. I don't know if anyone wants to join me there. They're welcome to. But as far as shows in the U.S. now, nothing until a little bit later in the year. But we're always working on new things. We have some workshops coming up. All that information is available on the website that anyone can look at. Always can give us a call to see what's going on. Yeah, this is great stuff. And it's just cool to see that Mamiya still supports any way that you want to capture and a lot of great film stuff, and like you said, with a very vast history of excellent products and intercompatibility between the old and the new, and it's just very cool to see you guys trudging on with this great stuff. And like you said, you can find out all this information at your site, or I guess I'll see you at Photo Plus coming up here in the fall in New York. So Be I sure. do really appreciate you joining us today, Jeff, and this is great stuff you guys are up to, buddy. Okay, thank you, Scott. Take care. Well, there you go. Jeff Carp with Mamiya. Definitely check out their stuff. Great support for the analog community. Beautiful cameras. Great stuff. I've been your host, Scott Chipper, here on Inside Analog Photo. And, of course, it's been brought to you by Fujifilm at fujifilmusa.com forward slash professional. Richard Photo Lab at richardphotolab.com. Upstrap at upstrap-pro.com. DR5 at dr5.com. 
and our media partners of the Analog Photography User Group, the place on the web for all things analog photography at www.apug.org. We'll be back next week with more great analog photography. 